uh, welcome to the sessions on transmission and distribution under the e sectiona program of vtu so this is professor umar rao from rv college of engineering bringing you the lectures so in the last sessions we had seen the short line model or uh, the model for medium line so for medium line we had seen two mod models one is the t model and one is the pi model so if the line length is more than 250 kilometers we call it as a long line and uh, see in middle medium line also we had considered the capacitance so what exactly we will do in the long line is we will take the nature of the distributed parameter so we we will not be using lumped parameters i can't lump the entire resistance and inductance and capacitance into one uh, point so we will be using the distributed nature so in this class we will be basically dealing with modeling of long transmission lines So in short and medium lines, the line resistance, inductance, and capacitance were represented as lumped parameters. And when the line is more than 250 kilometers, the distributed nature of the line parameters has to be taken into account. So let us uh, take the parameters of the line. So I'm using lowercase letters here, R, is the resistance per unit length x is the resistance the reactance per unit length and uh, p is the susceptance per unit length and g is the shunt conductance per unit length now what is the shunt conductance we are seeing it now it is actually you know uh, we use the shunt conductance to represent any leakage current maybe over the insulators or because of corona, the leakage currents due to corona and all that. Normally, this is neglected in the models, okay? Because it's negligible. It's not a, a very significant uh, amount. So this is how the distributed um, network would look like. Even this also, there is some lumping, but it will give you some idea. So you see here R and X. So this each one, each section represents one kilometer. So R and X, these are the parameters per unit kilometer, per unit length, which is one kilometer. And G and B, they are the shunt uh, susceptance and shunt conductance. Again, they are per unit uh, length, that is a kilometer. And you have the receiving end voltage and the sending end voltage here. So, we will neglect the conductance, we will not consider the conductance. Now, let me take at some point in the line, because I have to see once you take the distributed nature, then what happens, your impedance, R, X, Y, all these keep changing continuously from one point to the other point, I have not lumped it. So we have to see the, we have to take into effect this feature. So what we will do is this, I um, um, draw your attention to this figure. So here I have the receiving end. Okay, now I'm considering a point, I'm considering a point here, and this point is at a distance of X from the receiving end, at a distance X from the receiving end. So what I do is, so the voltage at this point is V and the current is I. So what is V? V is the voltage at a point X from the receiving end and I is a current at that point. Now I, I take a small, this is exaggerated, but I take a small portion of the line called delta X. Here, so I'll just take a small portion delta X. So since here, delta x is small, I can lump the impedance and admittance because it's only a small distance length of the line I'm considering. So the impedance is z delta x, z is the impedance per unit length 
and delta x is the length I'm considering. So z delta x is the impedance per unit length and y delta x is the admittance per unit length. Clear? Yeah. And the drop in the line here, I consider it as delta v. The drop in the line, we take it as delta v. And the current at the entrance to this portion of the network. See, I, you, you think of this as a box, black box. Right? So delta v is the drop across these two terminals. And uh, here, the voltage would obviously be v plus delta v because v is at the output port of this section. And so here, I'll have v plus delta v. Likewise, I will denote the current here as I plus delta I. Right? Now you see because of this capacitance, the distributed capacitance, this current here will be different from the current here. So I call it as I plus delta I. Okay? I hope this figure is clear to you. Let L, L be the total length of the line. So what am I doing here? I'm having the receiving end voltage VR. I'm having the sending end voltage VS. I'm taking a distance X from the um, receiving end and denoting the voltage at that point by V and the current there as I. And uh, so V plus delta V is the voltage at, on the input side of that section under consideration. And I plus delta I is the current at the input section under consideration. So now we'll try to write some simple equations. Don't bother too much. So let the voltage and current be this. Now what is delta V? It will be I into Z delta X. What is this Z delta X? Z delta X is the impedance of the section, portion of the line I'm considering of length delta X. So Z delta X is the impedance. Into the current will give me the voltage draw. Right, into the current will give me the voltage draw. So now let me take delta V by delta X. It's IZ. Okay, Z is the impedance per unit length. Now let me take the limit as delta x tends to zero. So what does that limit give me? We all know from differential calculus that will give me dv by dx and that is equal to iz. So this is important. Okay. Similarly, the current drawn by this here, this capacitance here, Right? So that would be the voltage here is V plus delta V. So the current drawn would be V into Y delta X. Right? So I am, I am approximating the voltage as V across the uh, capacitor. Because the delta X is very small. So we, we are doing it for a reason. You'll see what is the reason. So I get delta I is equal to V into Y delta X. So Y delta X is the admittance of that portion of the line of length delta X. So delta I by delta X is V into Y. Y is the admittance per unit length. And as I take the limit of delta X going to zero, this term becomes DI by DX is equal to V Y. See here, I have got an expression for dV by dx. We are used to the voltage changing, right, in series also. That concept is there in the mind that at the receiving end, the voltage is sending in minus voltage uh, drop in the line. But we don't have the concept of the current changing in a series path. We always assume that if there are no parallel paths, the current entering and the current leaving are the same. So here I'm giving a differential for the current. Di by dx. How the current changes as a function of the distance. Clear. So these two equations we have. So you see this gives you the variation of the voltage with respect to x and the current with respect to x. Now let's see whether we can do something. Let me take the second derivative of the voltage. So I had dV by dx is z into i. So when I take the differential again, so you see here, dV by dx is i z. When I differentiate this equation, my left-hand side becomes 
d squared v by dx squared. And my right hand side is i into d, uh, sorry, z is a constant, z into di by dx, right? z into di by dx. Do I know what is di by dx? Yes, I know. di by dx is equal to v into y. I'm going to take advantage of that. So d squared v by dx squared is z into di by dx. And di by dx is y into v. So I have this nice equation. It's a very standard equation. d squared v by dx squared is zy into v. So it is a second standard, second order differential equation in V. Now the solution for this is given by V is equal, it's a standard, standard one. You can refer to any differential calculus book. And anyway, you can try the solution. You can do D squared V by DX squared and see that it matches. So the solution for this is V equal to A, e to the power of root of yz into x, okay, plus b e to the power of minus root of yz into x. So here a and b are not your generalized constants, they're just some general constants. You can as well put a dash and b dash. Don't confuse it with the line constants a, b, c, d. This is just, so this a and b is the coefficient for any general solution. So a general solution of this second order differential equation given by d squared v by dx squared is zy v is this here. So now let me say root of yz. So what is y? y is the admittance per unit length and z is the impedance per unit length. So let me say root of yz is equal to gamma. I will denote it by gamma. And obviously it will be a complex number because y and z are complex numbers. So let us represent the complex number gamma as alpha plus j beta. Here, yeah. now there are some, some names to these. So there are some names to this. So gamma is called as the propagation constant because it tells you how the if voltage as an electromagnetic wave, how it propagates in the medium. The medium in this case is the transmission line. The real part alpha is called as the attenuation constant and beta is called as the phase constant. Yeah. Now, let us see whether we can do some more things here and see whether we can find out the generalized circuit constants, etc. So this is my solution. This is my solution. So I urge all of you who are watching this video to derive and show that this solution satisfies the equation d squared v by dx squared is equal to zy into v. I want you to check it out. And again, here I have put note in red, a and b are arbitrary constants and not the generalized constants of the line. So now let me differentiate dv by dx, okay? So when I differentiate uh, dv by uh, dx, I get, I differentiate the solution. So a is a constant, e to the power of root yzx is root yz into e to the power of root yzx. And here e to the power of minus gamma x will be minus, minus gamma e to the power of minus gamma x. So this is what I get, dv by dx from the solution, but we have already seen that dv by dx is equal to iz. We have already seen that, that is from the circuit. So this is from the mathematical solution. So I have taken dv by dx of this solution and I have already shown that dv by dx is iz. So I equate the two, I get iz is equal to a into root of yz, e to the power of root yzx, minus b into root yz e to the power of minus root yz x. Here. So from this, I can find the current. See, this is the, this is the expression for v, generalized expression for v at any distance x from the receiving end. 
I want an expression, similar expression for I. So I, I will divide this by Z. So I'll get A. And when I divide this by Z, then Z in, within the root would become Z square. So I have root of Y by Z, e to the power of root Y Z, X minus B root Y by Z, e to the power of minus root Y Z into X. So now I have neat solutions for the voltage and current at any distance X from the receiving end. X is the distance from the receiving end. Clear? So this root of Z by Y, yeah, I have Y by Z now. So this root Z by Y is called as the characteristic impedance of the line. It's called as a characteristic impedance of the line. So now I will write the two equations for V and I in compact form. So what is V? A e to the power of gamma X plus B e to the power of minus gamma X. That is B. And what is I? A. And this root of Y by Z is 1 by ZC, where ZC is called as the characteristic impedance. So it, it does not depend on the length of the line. It depends on the type of line. Okay. So because it's root of Y by Z, the ratio of admittance per unit length divided by impedance per unit length. So that does not, that ratio doesn't depend on the length of the lines. Right. So I have I is equal to A by ZC e to the power of gamma X minus B by ZC e to the power of minus gamma X. So we have expressions for V and I. Expressions for V and I. Now, at the receiving end, x will be 0. Why? Because x is the distance from the receiving end. So, obviously, at the receiving end, the distance is 0. So, x is equal to 0. And v is equal to vr. At the receiving end, v is equal to vr and i is equal to i r. We know that. So, let's substitute in the solutions for v and i in these solutions. If I substitute x is so the x is 0. Right. If I substitute x is 0, I can derive these constants a and b, not the generalized constants. They are the constants I have used in the solution, the coefficients in the solution. So x is 0 means v will become a plus b and i will be a by zc minus b by zc. Okay. So vr is equal to a plus b and ir is equal to this. So I get the coefficients a and b by solving these two equations. By solving these two equations, I solve for A and B. So what do I get? I get A is VR plus IRZC by 2 and B is equal to VR minus IRZC by 2. Clear? So now let's write the equations substituting for these coefficients. What was the solution of V? V is equal to A e to the power of gamma x and A is this. This is the coefficient A, not the, not the generalized constant A and this is B. So A e to the power of gamma x plus B e to the power of minus gamma x. Okay, now let us do one thing. Let us collect the terms of V r and I r like we always used to do. So I have VR, VR, right? And uh, here I have e to the power of gamma x by 2, e to the power of gamma x by 2. And here I have e to the power of minus gamma x by 2 by 2. Plus, IRZC by 2 is common. Then here I have e to the power of gamma x. And here I have minus e to the power of minus gamma x. Clear. Now, uh, from trigonometry, we know that sine functions and cos functions can be extracted from exponential functions because we know e to the power of j theta is cos theta plus j sine theta. Right. So similarly, here 
I have e to the power of gamma x plus e to the power of minus gamma x, where gamma is a complex number. So this is called as a hyperbolic cos function. So you know cos, this is hyperbolic, h. So you can pronounce it as cos. Some people pronounce it as cos h, or some simply say cos hyperbolic, anything. Let's, for this session, let's call it as cosh. Okay, so this is cosh. And this is sine hyperbolic. This is sine hyperbolic. Let's call it as shin, S-I-N-H, shin. Okay, you can call it as sine H, sine hyperbolic, or shin, let's call it as shin. So now I have V is equal to VR cosh gamma X plus IR ZC shine gamma X. Now, please pay attention to this formula. What is V? V is the voltage at a distance X from the receiving end. Right. So now you see, I have got an expression for the voltage at any point using the receiving end current and voltage using the receiving end parameters that's the beauty of this uh, equation similarly i substitute for i also i is 1 by z c a e to the power of gamma x minus 1 by z c b e to the power of minus gamma x so again i club the uh, terms of uh, VR and IR. So now this is shin and this is cosh. So I is equal to VR by ZC shin gamma X plus IR cosh gamma X. So what do I have now? In terms of the receiving end voltage and current, I have expressions for the voltage and current at any point at a distance X from the receiving end. Now let me take the sending end. So what's the distance between the sending end and receiving end? Obviously the length of the line, right? The length of the line. So in this expression, if I substitute X is L, if I substitute X is L, I will get the receiving end voltage and receiving end current, isn't it? This is a general expression for a distance X from the receiving end. So the sending end is at a distance of L kilometers from the receiving end. So if I substitute in this equation, X is equal to L, then I get the sending end voltage and the sending end current. So I write that see here. Now I have the sending end voltage and sending end uh, current in terms of receiving end voltage and receiving end current. Now you can find the generalized constants. So what is it in terms of generalized constant? Vs is equal to AVR, right? Plus VIR. So A is cosh gamma L and B is ZC shin gamma L. Next, IS. IS is equal to CVR plus this is C V R plus D I R. So C is shin gamma L by Z C and D is cosh gamma L, which is equal to A. So these are your generalized circuit constants. Clear? So don't confuse this AB with the coefficients we used. Next. Uh, so I have the expressions for A, B, and C. Next, we, 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 we evaluate e to the power of gamma L, right? So let us see what we have to do. So gamma L, gamma is root of Y into Z into L. Let me take this L inside the root. So it becomes L squared. Y, Z, L squared. So Y into L is the total admittance and Z into L is the total impedance. Y into L is the total admittance and Z into L is the total impedance. 
So I can write YL as root of capital YZ. So normally, lowercase letters are used for parameters of unit length and uppercase letters are used for the entire impedance and admittance. So here, YZ, root of YZ, here Y and Z are the total line admittance and impedance. ZC is root of Z by Y by definition. So let me multiply and divide both the numerator and the denominator. I'll get root of ZL by YL and ZL is nothing but Z, the total impedance and YL is the total admittance, right? So I can write A equal to D cosh gamma L, gamma L is root of YZ, right? So AD is equal to cosh into root of YZ and B is ZC shin gamma L. Gamma L is root YZ. And ZC is root of Z by Y. So I can write B is equal to root Z by Y shin root of Y into Z. And C is 1 by ZC, which is root of Y by Z shin root YZ. So I have now, now the expressions for ABCD constants, the generalized circuit constants, in terms of the total line impedance and the total line admittance. Clear? Now, obviously the next question is, you may not have been familiar with these hyperbolic functions. Maybe you have done it in your pre-university or college, anyway. So how to calculate the hy hyperbolic functions? So cosh of X, where X is any number, is equal to one plus, this is the Taylor series. You have similar series for sine, cos, and all that. You would have used it. You would have written programs in first year in C to calculate sine, etc. So cosh x is one plus x squared by two factorial plus x to the power of four by four factorial and so on in finite series. So cosh of root y z is equal to one plus x squared will be root yz whole squared is yz divided by two factorial. x to the power of four is y squared z squared by four factorial. Shin x is x plus x cubed by three factorial plus x to the power of five by five factorial. So x is root yz, right? Here in this case, so you can replace x cubed will be root of y z whole cube by three factorial and so on. Remember here y and z are all complex numbers. So when I do the problem, I'll tell you how to take the mm, square root of a complex number. So we already saw the propagation constant gamma is y z. Okay. And uh, this is equal to J omega C. I have neglected the conductance. So admittance is J omega C and impedance is R plus J omega L. So we write it as alpha plus J beta. Alpha is called as the attenuation constant and it has the unit of nepper, nepers per kilometer. And beta is the phase constant and its units will be radians per kilometer so many radians per kilometer it determines what is beta what is beta determine it determines the phase of the wave per unit length so in one you length that is one kilometer by what angle will the phase of the voltage or current whatever shift that is called as that is given by beta if you neglect resistance if you uh, neglect resistance then propagation constant becomes a purely imaginary number. Alpha will become zero. There is no attenuation. Attenuation of a signal is when the signal amplitude reduces. We say the signal gets attenuated. Right. So if you neglect the resistance, there is no attenuation. You only have beta, the phase constant. And the wavelength is given by 2 pi by beta. So in this model, this type of modeling, 
we are treating the voltage and current as electromagnetic waves. If you look at the equation we wrote, V is equal to A to the power of gamma X plus B to the power of minus gamma X. It's exactly similar to the wave propagation equations you would have written in electromagnetic field theory in waves. Right. So what are we doing in this long line model? I am treating the voltage and current as electromagnetic wave because of the accounting of the distributed nature of the parameters. Yeah. So now let's do a problem. Be careful when you do the problems. Um, a three phase 200 kilometers transmission line has these parameters. R, X, and B per, you, per kilometer. Determine the sending end voltage and current, the regulation, and the efficiency using rigorous method. This is called as rigorous method. Rigorous is where you're accounting for the distributed nature of the line. And the line supplies a load of 20 megawatts, 0.8 PF at 110 kV. So you know the load at the receiving end, right? So let us see R is 0.15 into 200, X is 0.2 into 200, and you have Y, don't forget to put this J for Y. I have Y, so multiply everything by the parameters per unit length into the length of the line, and I have Z. Right. So what you should do initially is make whatever calculations are needed for you to, you know, evolve your hyperbolic functions. Now, root of YZ, I have to find. So this is Y and this is Z. So how do you find the square root of a number, complex number? Better convert it into polar forms, like how we have done here, convert it into polar coordinates. Then the, you multiply the magnitudes, right? Take the square root of the magnitude and you add the angles because you're taking the product, add the angles and to find the square root, take half of the angle, right? So whenever you want to take the square root of a complex number, Determine whatever you want to find the square root in polar form. The magnitude is the root of the magnitude and the angle is half of the angle. So I get root of yz is this point one zero nine five at an angle of 71.56 degrees. Then zy, z into y. I know root of zy, this is root of zy, so square of that. So do the reverse when you do the square. Multiply the magnitude by itself. Take the square of the magnitude and double the angle. So square the magnitude and double the angle. So I have ZY. Then I need ZY squared. This all these are, you know, you do all these calculations a priori to calculate your uh, hyperbolic functions using the Taylor series. That's the reason. Okay. So ZY squared. I'll take again the square of this. So again, you see the magnitude has doubled and the, uh, sorry, the angle has doubled and the magnitude is squared. Then we need ZC also. So root of Z by Y, I have ZC. So we have initially calculate all these parameters, which are useful in calculating your um, hyperbolic functions. So I find out one by ZC. Now A is equal to D is cosh root YZ. So using the Taylor series, one plus YZ by two factorial plus YZ squared by four factorial, I have neglected the higher order terms. It's okay because Y is very small, no? Y is very small. So here Y squared, I've already got 10 to the power of minus four. So if you take the next term, it will be very small, insignificantly small. So three, first three terms are enough to uh, get the value of the hyperbolic function. So this is one, and this is yz by two, and this is yz whole squared by two, and be careful. So 
I do the division and I have converted this into rectangular form because I have to add then again this. And so I get finally I get AD is equal to 0 0.9952 at an angle of 0 0.207 degrees. Next, shin into root of yz is root yz plus yz whole cube by 6. Two terms are enough because you already have cube. So it will be very small. Okay. So this is root of yz and I have to find the cube. So I get the answer here in polar. I convert it into rectangular, add it and then find the final value. So I've got the value of shin and cosh. Next, I find the receiving end parameters. So 20 megawatts is the receiving end load. So this is P. This is root 3, VL. VL is 110 or you can do 3 V phase. This can be 3 V phase, but I have taken root 3, VL. VL is 110 kV cos five. I'm just done it in a different way so that you, you know that there are two ways to do it. Find the current. So if you divide by three, you will get the per phase power. In that case, you should use the line to neutral voltage, which is the line to line voltage divided by root three. So now you don't need it. I'll use directly the line to line voltage. So I get IR is 131.22. This is the magnitude. The power factor will fix my angle. It's minus 36.86 degrees with respect to VR. VR is the reference. So now VR, this is the line voltage. To find VS, you have to get the phase voltage. This is the line to neutral voltage. This is the line voltage, 110 kV. This is the line to neutral voltage. Now I have all the parameters I have calculated to find out the performance, sending in parameters, efficiency, etc. etc. So Vs is Vr cosh gamma L plus Ir Z C shin gamma L. I have Vr. So remember in this equation, they're all on per phase basis. Here you should not use any line quantities. That's why this is the line to neutral voltage. This is cosh gamma L. I have calculated Ir is 131.22 at an angle of minus 36.86. This is ZC and this is shin comma L. So I do all the calculations and I get Vs is 69519 at an angle of 1.706 degrees volts. What is this? This is the sending end line to neutral. So this, look at this. The sending end line to line will be line to neutral into root 3. So that is 120.41. Angle will not change at an angle of 1.706 degrees. Because in a balanced circuit, whatever is the phase angle difference in the uh, per phase, between sending end and re receiving end, it would be the same between line to line, the corresponding line to line. Okay. So I have found the sending end voltage. Sending end current, we have the formula. So here I have uh, VR by uh, ZC, shin gamma L into IR plus IR into cosh gamma L. So I get IS, I get the sending end current. Just a caution, please do the calculations carefully because you're dealing with so many complex numbers. Then percentage regulation, Vs by A. Why did I take Vs by A? I'm taking Vr not. So long line, you use that because the difference will be substantial. Okay, so Vs by A minus Vr by Vr. So I get 9.99. Approximate computation would be Vs minus Vr. I get 9.46. Here. So this is using the formula of no load receiving end voltage 
minus full load receiving end voltage by Vr. And this is using the formula Vs minus Vr by Vr. Now, what is the sending end power? So you know that it is three times Vs Is cos by S. So three Vs, use line to neutral because I have used three here. If you use line to line, to line use root three here. Then Is cos phi S. The angle of Vs is 1.706. And the angle of IS is minus 30.93. So I get 21.445 megawatts. Clear? Yeah. So efficiency is output is 20 megawatts. And input sending end is 21.445 megawatts. So the efficiency of the transmission line is 93.26%. So, uh, in this session, I have covered in detail the modeling of the long transmission line. Modeling of the long transmission line. This is also called as the rigorous method. So, here we see that the ABCD constants um, are defined in terms of hyperbolic trigonometric functions. And uh, we define so many new things here. So the gist of it is, in the long line model, I'm going to treat the voltage and current as electromagnetic waves. Voltage and current as electromagnetic waves. Clear? So you have a propagation constant gamma. The real part of it is called as the attenuation constant. So as the wave attenuates in the medium, as the wave travels in the medium, it gets attenuated. And beta is called as the phase constant, which gives you the phase shift. And we also saw how to calculate the parameters. And we define the characteristic impedance. It's root of z by y. And we saw some examples. Again, I suggest the same example. You try to solve using the short line model, using the nominal T model, the nominal pi model, and see if you can make a comparison of the answers with different 